So whenever we did 10.1, we talked about like percents and percent change. Whenever we did 10.2, we did simple interest. So that's like, I need some money from the bank. Um, and then obviously I'm charged, right, for like, you know, being given that money. And then 10.3 was, I've got my own money. I'm going to use my money to make money. That was all that certificate of deposits. And um, now 10.4 is all of this money that I've made uh, from, you know, depositing my own money into a CD. I'm going to start financing some stuff. Because obviously in America, we pretty much finance everything. So this breaks down like, you know, how do you compute a finance charge? How do you figure out how much you're being charged monthly? How do you figure out um, what your monthly payment is on just whatever? I think I did like a, a Louis Vuitton bag for the last class, like $2,500. I was like, yeah, that's about the cost of a bag, you know? Um, and so I just have examples of how to do all of the different homework problems. And then I'll turn off the recording and then I want to open up the homework. There's 10 problems. I'm just going to kind of walk through because the last one, I really want to explain um, like just kind of the way it looks because I didn't make mine look exactly like it and I don't want anybody to get confused. And that's it. Okay, so 10.4. Installment buying. I'm going to not probably be able to use this pen for too long. I need to buy some more. <laughs> Definitely not a straight line. I'm going to turn my body. <sighs> okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, like five different definitions that we need to talk about. Um, and it is like how the homework starts, obviously, the way it usually always does. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and start working with our formulas, okay? So we have something that's called a fixed installment loan. Yeah, it's going to die. Hmm. I'm going to use it till it is no longer working. Fixed installment loan. A fixed installment loan is where you pay fixed amounts. A uh, fixed amount, I don't think it's plural y'all. It's a fixed amount of money. Fixed meaning it doesn't change, okay? You pay fixed amount of money for a set number of payments usually 24 36 48 or 60 months so that's 24 to 60 months of these fixed amount of payments um, <laughs> period and then like, you know, for an example, what they mean whenever they talk about a fixed installment loan, uh, that would be like a car or boat loan, right? You pay monthly payments on that for however many months and each and every single month you pay the same, right? So that's what the fixed means. Um, so car, boat loans, uh, tuition, that is, you know, having to pay a certain amount of money. Um, for a set number of months, appliances. Uh, I can't spell today. I actually don't know a day I ever can spell, but I feel like today is one of the days I cannot. Appliances um, or furniture, something like that. Meh. Fun, fun with numbers. Furniture. I should take stock in white up. Okay, so um, that's fixed, right? Certain amount of payments that you're going to make on whatever it is that you know you could be financing um, with this loan, and fixed meaning that it does not change. Okay, now we have an open-ended installment loan.
And so this is where you make variable payments, variable that they can change. This is where you make variable payments each month. They just had one example of this, which makes, you know, it makes sense. Um, like your credit cards. The amount of payment that you make that month um, is based off of the amount of money that you charged that month or that you spent that month. Um, it's not the exact same amount. You can make the exact same amount of payments every single month, but here, um, the amount that you owe will change. Okay, sorry, I was reading. Okay, let me do this so my bracelet quits hitting. Okay, well, that kind of helps. Okay, so whenever we talk about rate in these problems or like whenever we use the, um, the formula, it is the annual percentage rate. And then in parentheses, you just make it an acronym. Um, very common to see like, you know, what is your APR? What is your annual percentage rate? And what an APR is, it is a, or the true rate of interest charged for the And you'll see today, we're going to actually use this um, on the homework. Whenever you do a problem, if it needs to use this table, you push a button and it shows you the table. Um, uh, on the test, like, or there was something wrong with our printer today, so I couldn't print them. This was from yesterday. Um, but like on the test, I'll just like put this on your desk. And so if it tells you to, you know, look at a certain number of payments and figure out what this is, uh, you'll have this, okay? I didn't get to print y'all up some today, but we will use that. I can show y'all what to do. Okay, so the annual percentage rate will calculate like how much money are you being charged for having to like finance something, okay? And it does, it changes based on like how much money you owe at the time. Um, now in the end, when it's all said and done, after I finance something, obviously there's gonna be a charge, right? Because I literally told somebody, I want blank or whatever it may be. I've been going with the Louis Vuitton purse all day. Um, like I want this, but I don't have the money right now to pay for it. I do make money, um, but I would like to make payments on blank, whatever it is. Well, obviously, if I'm going to make payments, that means they're not getting all of their money up front, so they're going to charge me. Uh, Y'all do this. FC. Finance charge. Sorry about that. Okay, so the finance charge is the total amount of money the ooh, I almost spelled it wrong borrower must pay for you guessed it borrowing money <laughs> right for borrowing money Okay, actually, they, it's a colon. It was not a period after money. Okay, so I am charged a finance charge because I had to borrow money. I didn't have all of it, all of it up front. Um, and so this, what this is, it is going to be interest plus any additional fees charged. Any additional fees charged? Period. Loud. Period. Okay, I've got one more like little definition, and then we'll actually kind of. Um, I'm gonna try to thoroughly explain the actual formula that we'll be using.
to figure out um, one of our problems or some of our problems. Okay, I'm sure that looks funny. Pull my arms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So last one. Um, mm -mm -mm, we have a loan. Uh, I'm gonna get charged like a certain amount of interest based off of like the amount of money I'm financing. Um, in the end, there's a finance charge because it you know costs money to borrow money. And um, overall, when everything's said and done, there's a total installment price. And if I do have to write it, again, I'm gonna write T-I-P. So we've got A, P, R, F, C, and T-I-P. Okay, so the total installment price is the sum, sum meaning like we're adding, right? What are we adding? We're adding um, the sum of all monthly payments The sum of all monthly payments and down payment, comma, if any. You might not have had to leave the store giving them some money. You could just start making payments. And so your total installment price is what is the sum of every single payment you paid? Um, they could say, hey, before you, I finance this to you, before I let you make payments on it, you owe me $1,000, right? So that was my down payment. In the end, the total installment, right, every single thing, my total price at the end would be that $1,000 that you took from me and all the monthly payments that I made, right? Like that's the total price in the end that I paid for whatever it is that I'm financing. Okay. Uh, again, like first four problems, it, it's this. Okay, this is what it comes from. Um, it's going to be those definitions. Okay. Ow. Ow. So, <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about the installment. <laughs> I told you I was tired. Oh, it's, oh it was 11. Um, let's talk about the total installment formula. Okay. Um. So if I want to figure out uh, what, like, I'm going to be paying monthly, this is the uh, formula that I use. It's called the total installment formula. <laughs> I'm sorry, the installment payment formula. I can't talk. I can't write. Installment payment. What you're figuring out whenever you do this is like what your monthly payment is for whatever it is you're financing. Um, they use very similar letters and variables that we've seen before. Um, some of the definitions and what they call it is slightly different. Oh, and then on the test, I will either write every single formula that we've done on the board or I'll print up like a little formula sheet for y'all so you could still use your note card but you don't have to worry about all these formulas like being written on the note card I'll take care of that part y'all write the other like notes that you need to yourself okay okay so it is a uh, lowercase m equal fraction bar it's I mean it's fairly long there's a bunch of stuff going on in our denominator okay so M little M think monthly payment uh, numerator you're going to have your P open R over N close I don't really want to call these what they are just yet because I don't want to confuse you I'll define everything in a second I'm um, in the denominator you go one minus open one plus R over N close. And now I'm gonna raise this to the negative N times T power. And y'all like, 
the first, I think there's like, you know, three examples for this formula. And I'm gonna like really take my time explaining um, just how to enter everything into the calculator. So everyone should be like really, really good when we get done. Um, our M, this is our installment payment. Okay, when it, an installment just means that, you know, uh, you're making these payments every single month, right? So it's like a monthly payment. They're gonna call it an installment payment. What they call your P in this section is amount financed because this is the financing portion. It still means principal because what is principal? Principal is like the initial starting amount of money, right? So this is like the initial amount of money that we start making payments on. It will be called though amount financed. Okay. We have our R, which is, it's still a rate, but specifically in these problems, when you see the M equals, what our R is, is the annual percentage rate as a decimal. So it's just real specific, right? And then our N, in this formula, when we are set equal to our little baby M, our N is the number of payments per year. And then lastly, T is time in years. I'm gonna scoot this up. I actually, mm, no, I am gonna change pages just because I wanna be able to show like um, the work and not just show it on my calculator uh, doing these little three examples. So wait a second for you to get that, then I'm gonna change. Okay. We're going to do an example. Compute the monthly payment using, and then I'm going to copy that formula down again. Um, if you still can see it on your page, you don't have to do that, but I am because I have flipped pages, okay? So compute the monthly payment. Using M equals fraction P R over N. 1 minus open 1 plus R over N close to the negative. I'll throw everything off. You forget that negative. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I did. I tried to make it like a thicker line and all I did was mess it up. Okay. So we're going to have four columns. It's going to say amount financed, APR, number of payments, time. One, two, three, four, five columns. Um, and then monthly payment. So I'm just gonna write everything here, going straight across the page. So we'll have an amount financed. They'll be giving me this and it will be my P. And then we have our APR. Again, in these problems, we're given our APR. What we're just doing is just solving the monthly payment, okay? Then we have the number. Of payments. Which is our N. We have um, time. 
which is T. And then we have our monthly payment, or like it's, it's our installment payment. Um, they will call it monthly. That's what we're solving for. So for these three examples, that is what I do not know. Because that's what it told me to solve for. Okay. We're going to call this A little bitty baby A. That's what it is, I promise. Um, say that we have this amount that we finance and it is $780. I finance this amount with a 4.5% APR. Okay, the number of payments per year, right? The number of payments per year that I make is 12 which should kind of make sense because we're dealing with monthly payments right and then for our time on this problem i'm going to make 12 monthly payments per year for two years and then it wants to know what the monthly payment is i'm going to go and work on this one and then we'll do another one and another one okay if we work on a right here i have m is equal to fraction bar <coughs> The formula says P, which is first column, which is $780. Open, N over D, because there's a little baby fraction inside of there. And it's my rate divided by the number of payments. Now my rate is 4.5%, but I need to move that decimal. I need to convert that to 0 0.045. And then you divide your rate by your N, which is 12 make sure you close your parenthesis right there or it'll throw off the whole order of operations you go down to the denominator and we have one minus open one plus the exact same little fraction you see above you close raise to the negative 12 times 2 power okay this right here gives me how much money I will be paying every single month for whatever it is that this item is that I have financed. <coughs> okay. <laughs> you open your calculator. Always clear it. Just make sure there's nothing else um, stored in it anywhere. Um, with this problem, I see a large fraction. So I actually start with my N over D button. I type 780 and I open parentheses. I see another N over D button. In the numerator here that's blinking, I've got 0 0.045 and then I go down and I've got 12. Don't try to close it there because it'll only stay right there with your 12. You wanna use this cursor and scoot over and close it there, it's the button above nine. And then I need to move down to the denominator and I type one minus open one plus. That's a fraction, which is N over D 0 0.045 down 12 over close. And then very common mistake. This is negative N times T. A lot of people will accidentally push the like subtraction button which is not correct. Um, I haven't hit the carrot yet to go up to the exponent field, but I just wanted to show y'all. When I actually say negative, you're gonna push the button that's next to your decimal at the bottom, okay? Okay, so I used the carrot to be in the exponent field, and this is a negative 12, open to close, enter. Monthly, for two years, right, I'm gonna make payments of $34 and you round to the nearest cent. This is uh, 045. The nearest cent would be that four, but because there's a five next to it, I need to go up one, which would make it a nickel. And then I've got two other problems where it's the exact same setup, but obviously the rate changes um, and you know the amount finances I'm sorry, the amount financed changes. 
Did you get the right answer? No. You want to try it one more time and then bring me the calculator? Or just whenever you need me to. I can look at it. Mario, I want you to use this while we do the rest of the problems. That way you can like actually work on it and stuff, okay? I, I usually can kind of remember where the buttons are. So I'll try my best being like, you find that button here. Let's make sure that she ends up getting the same answer there before we continue. <laughs> oh, y'all, goodness gracious. I'm like chronically tired today. Thirty-four oh five. Did you get it? Okay. Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah, I'd rather wait and just know that y'all can like use those well. All the chapter ten. I mean, it's all formulas, word problems, obviously, but like definitely. I um, mean, you'll be able to use that for the test, Mario. You could use mine whenever we take the test. Okay, that way you have it at home. Though use that does most. Yeah. <coughs> okay, you did or did not? Nope, come on. Let me see it. I can do it right here. New calculator. Neither of us know what we're doing. We're going to learn together. Okay. Do you see how that's negative? Do you see your... I didn't put it. Uh-uh, you didn't do that. And did you do 12 times 12? That's 12 times... N times T, which is... <coughs> N uh huh. Okay. So can't I... Okay, do you see how I just kind of moved my cursor up and it kind of let me work on it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna highlight. Actually, I'm gonna get right behind the one that deleted that one. I get right in front of um, the one and I need to do a negative. The negative button, have you been able to find it on here? Cause that's probably gonna give us an error because this is a subtraction. Yep, there it is. Because, yeah, it looks just the same, too, inside the parentheses. So now we added that, 780.045, 1 minus open 1 plus. Everything should be good. Is it just equal? Mm -hmm. There we go. And then you would round that. Okay. Yay. So that was it. Okay. The negative and that 2. You had it as a 12. Okay. I did a nap, I think, y'all. Okay, B. B, 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 Say that I financed $850 with a 6% APR. Number of payments per year is 12 because they're monthly payments. Um, I'm only going to make payments for one year. And it wants to know what my monthly payment is. <laughs> and look, I definitely did not keep things in line because this should be where my blank is. And this is where my blank is. But I'm gonna do the same color, so it should help. Okay, let's do B right here. M equal fraction bar. Your P, which is eight, five, zero, open. Do the N over D button to do a fraction. We're gonna do our rate over the number of payments. 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. Go down, type 12, scoot over, close. Go down to the denominator. 1 minus open. 1 plus N over D. That N over D button should be like three buttons above the 7, is what I'm thinking. I need to do 0 0.06 over 12 again, because it's the same thing that's going on in your numerator. Mm, don't need on. And then you scoot over and you close your parenthesis. You do the caret button, which is to the left of the seven up one. It's above the X squared. Um, that pulls you into the exponent field. Do negative, which is down by the decimal. And then we do N times T. So that's negative 12 times one, which is just 12, but I'm just gonna go ahead and write all of it. 
Now, whenever you do this and you hit enter and you round, did you get $73.16? Did you do it on your calculator? Were you able to? It should be 73 and 16 cents. I'm going to wait just a second and let y'all enter that in just to make sure that we're on the same page. Did you get it? Yeah? Awesome. Did you get it really? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so let's do one more, it's just a larger amount. Um, we're gonna call it C. Kinda can't tell, but it is an actual like greenish color. This one's like bluish. So let's say that we go and we finance a car. Whatever you want to call it, it really doesn't matter. Sixteen thousand five hundred dollars with a six point five percent annual percentage rate. Monthly payments, therefore the number of payments per year is twelve. I make these payments for four years. And so what is my monthly payment? C is M equals fraction bar it's P times R over N my P is one six five zero zero open six point five as a decimal is point oh six five divide that by twelve close it in the denominator we have one minus open one plus point oh six five Divided by 12, closed. Raise that to the negative n, which is 12, times t, which is 4. And then here, we get a dollar amount, which is our monthly payment for this item um, with all of this information. What do y'all get? It's kind of little because it's like smushed. Um, numerator is 16500. Open, that's 0 0.065 divided by 12. And then close. And that's the same thing down here 0 0.065 divided by 12. What you should get is $391.30. Okay. It's like 299 or something like that, or 296. Um, when you round it, that second um, place value, which is a nine, becomes a 10, which made the two become a three. Uh, my math lab is very, very, very picky. So just be careful that you understand how to round really well. Okay, so those are the examples that I have for computing the monthly payment. Glad I called it number one. That was number three. Okay. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to determine the finance charge and the monthly payment. Um, because we're not given the finance charge, even though it tells us to find the monthly payment, we don't do the steps that we just did. We are given the, um, sorry, hold on, I'm trying to say this right. We are given the same information we're given here, but um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let me just show you, and maybe it'll make more sense. Let me try to talk, because I will go around in a circle. Determine the finance charge and the monthly payment. Determine the finance charge and monthly payment. Okay. So I'm going to switch because the black one really isn't doing well. You need $4,375 to purchase business supplies. You finance the purchase with a sixty month fixed installment loan. with an APR of 6%. So it's basically saying that's how much money you need to like borrow, essentially. Um, you don't have all that money or you just want to make payments to make it easier on yourself. So you finance it. You're going to make payments for 60 months. Um, they're going to be the same, you know, fixed payments. And in the end, um, it was all like calculated with a 6% APR. And then they want you to figure out like how much were you charged for doing this? What was that finance charge? And so the way that we do that, give me one second. Okay, finance charge. We use the APR table. The APR is an amount of money per hundred dollars that you finance. Um, and like, here, let me just show it to you this way. So, depending on the number of payments that you make and how many. I'm trying to hold on. I like, I don't want to confuse anybody because I think I said that wrong. Um, you borrow $300, right? There's three hundreds in $300. The APR is like so much money added on to each hundred. Once I answer it, I'll be able to say it in a different way. Um, but this will be what you use to solve this problem. So what we do is we notice that it says 60 months and it says 6%. You get the APR table, you go to 60 months, the numbers are kind of smushed, but if I go all the way until I get to the 6%, I notice that I'm right here, which is $16. This is saying that per every single hundred you finance, $16 is being added um, and in the end, that ends up being what you ended up paying for your finance charge. So, 60 months at 6% is 
is, and we just found it, it was $16. That's $16 per hundred. Per in math means divide, right? So you take what you borrow and you divide it by a hundred to see how many hundreds are in there. So if you take four, three, seven, five, and you divide by 100, you'll see that it is four, three point seventy five. So there's 43 and 70 fifths of a hundred in this total amount. So what I do, if I'm gonna get charged $16 per all of the different hundreds that I have, that is saying $16 times 43.75 hundreds. When you put that in your calculator, I'm going to have a finance charge. I'm going to pay $700 more in the end than my purchase price because it was all being calculated with a 6% APR for 60 months. So many words. I think I could have like solved it first and then kind of explained it <laughs> instead of trying to explain it before I solve it. But yes, for this one, if it talks about you, well, actually it'll talk about somebody needing to make a purchase um, and it'll It'll pretty much be worded just like this. Well, that find, I'm sorry, that found the finance charge. Now what we need to do is find the monthly payment. Now, if you notice, um, I'm trying to think, what's a good way? It's 12 payment, 60, you have the time. For this particular problem, I'll give it the exact same way I'm doing right here. Your monthly payment is going to be based off of figuring out what the total is that you're gonna pay in the long run with everything considered, and then divide it by the number of months you're gonna be making that payment. So the total installment price is what you purchased it for plus the finance charge total price in the end what I'm going to pay is what I bought it for or I'm buying it for making payments on and what you charged me I um, have this purchase that I financed of $43.75 I'm gonna be charged $700 in the long run And whenever I add this up, I get 5075. This is my total installment price, right? It wants me to find my monthly payment. So if you take everything you pay in the end of this finance agreement and you divide it by the number of monthly payments you're going to make, what you end up getting is what those actual monthly payments are. There's one or two of these on the homework, y'all. Um, find the finance charge, add it to that beginning price, and then just divide it by the total monthly payments. I'm sorry, the total monthly um, whatever that you see there. Because that's how you figure out how much you're actually paying every single month. Okay, I'm going to switch the page. That kind of makes sense. I feel like I like put my foot in my mouth a few times, went down a rabbit hole just a little bit, try to put more words than I think I need to. I just know that a lot of the problems you might question, like, well, how do I know when to do what? You know what I mean? And like that's, that's the aggravating thing. It is kind of just like, you know, how you see the problem being worded and pretty much exactly what they tell you to find. Um, finding a P R. First we did the monthly payment. Now we just did the finance charge and the monthly payment. Now we're going to learn how to find 
the APR. So finding your APR, what you do, you have to do a little bit of math to figure out what was my finance charge? What did I get charged for having to borrow money? I'm going to divide that charge by the amount financed. And lastly, I multiply it by 100. Doing that right there shows you or like actually solves for what the annual percentage rate is. After you do this little formula, um, there's like one more step because on your APR little table, all of these amounts right here in the middle, those are actually dollar amounts because remember it was $16 added to each and every individual 100 at 60 months um, at 6%. Um, these are dollar amounts. And so when you do this, you're given the dollar amount. You then find it to see what your rate is, like what your percent is. Okay. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven columns, not seven examples. It's just one example, but there's seven columns. Okay. So I'm going to kind of write a little small. I'm going to try to. Never happens. Oh, you know what? I think I have like a fine point. Something or other. I do. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can see it, but hopefully you can. Okay. This was my, my purse example. Okay. This Louis Vuitton bag has a cash price. I'm going to go and fill out all of these things kind of while I'm doing it. The cash price is $2,500. Okay. Now there is a down payment that you will be charged if you have to finance this bag and it's in the amount of $500. Okay. Now, once they take that $500 down payment, the amount that would be financed, well, if it cost $2,500 and I gave you $500 down, right, I'm going to be financing $2,000. There's no real thought put into this. They show you all of this, y'all, okay? Um, now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out what the APR is. So, I'm just going to write APR. Obviously, it's a rate, and so rates are, you know, a percent. <laughs> and then we have the number of payments. Which is 12. I don't know a time for it when it's not 12 and 10.4, y'all, okay? Um, the amount of payments. Monthly, I'm paying $175. And then right here. I have finance charge. So if you notice on this problem, there's two things that I'm figuring out and it's going to be the APR and it's going to be the finance charge. Ow. Okay. So what you do for this problem, I don't remember how many there are on the test, I'm on the test, on the homework. I think there's, there might just be one, honestly. Okay. So, we start with finding our total installment price. Total installment price, the total price. That was the sum of all payments with the down payment, if any, right? So the sum of all payments, here are my payments. I'm gonna pay $175 for 12 months. 
So if I take 175 and I multiply it to 12, and it's a total installment price that I take the sum of all payments um, and down payment, if any, there is a down payment. So total price in the end, you're gonna end up paying whatever you started your financing with and every single payment you made after that. If you put this into your calculator, you should get $2,600. So in the end, that's what I ended up paying, right? Now, let me take a drink. I'm doing this to figure out the finance charge. I can't figure out the finance charge because that's how much over I was charged for borrowing. I can't figure that out unless I look at what was the overall price that I paid anyways. Now, with this problem, they did give us that cash price. So our finance charge, if I actually had $2,500, I would go in there and I would just buy the bag. But I didn't have $2,500. I had $500. I started making payments for 12 months. This is all I actually needed to pay off. But I ended up paying 2600 I'm sorry, yeah, 2600 in the end. Um, what you do is you take what you paid in the end and you want the difference from what you would have paid had you not have to borrow any money. That difference is 100 bucks. It cost me $100 more to pay for this bag because I didn't have $2,500 for that cash price. That's my actual finance charge. It would be a very common mistake to say without doing this step that your finance charge was $600 because you see this and you see that, but the finance charge is actually gonna be like if you didn't have to purchase anything, I mean finance anything, um, what would you have walked out of the store paying, okay? Okay, now that was the finance charge. How do I figure out the APR? What well, said take the finance charge, put it over the amount financed, uh, and then multiply to a hundred. So the finance charge is a hundred bucks over I financed two thousand dollars. Multiply this to a hundred. Y'all, this uh, math right here, doing this gives you a dollar amount that you look for on the table. Y'all get five. Everyone should get five. Okay, so this right here, is dollar amount on APR. You same column. actually find the percent this is not a percent what you do is you grab your table or online you, you click the button and it shows you the table okay I know that the number of payments I made was 12 so right here I find 12 it'll tell you to find the one as close as possible as you can right this is telling me that for every hundred that I have financed, I'm paying $5, but I want the percent. So go to 12 and go all the way over until you get to a number that's the closest to five without getting, going over. And that's this very last value at the end. This 494, boom, right there. You see it? Okay. That is the closest thing I can get to five without going over. So the actual annual percentage rate that I'm paying or I'm getting charged is 9%. That's the actual answer. This gives you the dollar amount, you find it, and then wherever you end up, you use that same column to figure out what your rate is. So therefore, um, the APR is 9%. It looks like a a percent that makes sense y'all okay 
I wish there was more of like just, you know, the same type of problems sometimes because I noticed that there are homeworks that, I mean, you learn like five or six different processes and this is, uh, this is one of them. I don't even lie, it's just one of them. I think this, I've got one more page left, Joe. Yes, I got one more page left. And then, um, like I said, I'm gonna turn off the video and then I wanna go to the homework and I really wanna show y'all. Because I did, I'm usually good at trying to do this. On this last problem, I didn't do this and I just wanna show y'all like, hey, this is what it looks like. Okay. Let's say that on February the 3rd, you have a balance that you owe. So it's kind of assumed that you're talking about like a credit card, right? You have a balance that is owed. Um, I'm going to write down what I'm saying. Now. And the problem wants you to figure out like what is the interest that you got charged for one month and then you fill that into the little blank on my math lab. And then it asks, what is your new balance? Okay, and so that's what we're gonna solve right here. Um, so let's say, and I guess I could have written example already this. <coughs> if y'all wanna write example, y'all can, okay? On February 3rd, you have A balance of $233 owed, comma, uh, 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 balance owed, you have a balance $233 owed, I can't remember the exact wording right here, um, with 1.25% per month interest. <laughs> I'm just kind of coming up with this last sentence because I didn't write it and I don't know what it says. But what we're gonna do for the first part of this problem is find the interest um, charged or like I guess it would be charged. Find the interest charged um, for one month, okay? So find interest charged for one month. And the new balance that's all I'm gonna say. It'll make sense whenever I show you on the homework, okay? Okay, so there's like a note, basically, here. We're gonna take it back just a little bit. Whenever we figure out what the interest is for one month, it is going to be with simple interest. Okay, so use I equals PRT when you compute charge for one month. Even if they wanted more than one month, like it wouldn't matter, but um, the point here is just use that formula whenever you figure out what the interest is charged for that one month. Um, now what we do is I equals PRT. I equals here your P or your principal. Um, it's just talking about the amount of money that you owe that month, which here I've got $233 open. They give me the rate of 1.25%. As a decimal, that would be 0 0.0125 close. Here's something that's different because you're computing it for one month. You're just going to multiply this by one. But like that's your T. Computing it for one month makes your T one. 
Now you put this into your calculator and you notice that with that tiny little percent that I'm being charged right per month, the interest on me owing $233 is $2.91. So that's like the first answer and that is the interest that I've been charged for a month. Sorry. Um, and then I need to write a little bit more so that it kind of introduces these um, like transactions. Remember, we're still not talking about a credit card. Okay, so I'm going to switch to purple. It says if this is uh, the interest, the 233, that's what I owed, right? So if previous balance is $233. And the following transactions occur and it's like what do you mean like what transactions there will be a little table on the um, the homework I think both of them are slightly different there's two of these problems okay um, both of them are slightly different but it shows you that there was a charge of $54 as well as another charge of $22. You made a payment in the amount of $130. And then you charge your card again for 90. Okay, now the question is um, if previous balance is $230, the following transaction occur, transactions occur, uh, find new balance. And if you're okay, I'm going to kind of find the new balance right here. It's the, the same steps, no matter how many charges or payments you end up having. What you do is you start with what your previous balance is. But the next month, this 233 doesn't go away. I start the month owing 233. Now, if I use my credit card and I swipe it for $54, I am now in debt an additional $54, right? And then I swipe my card again for 22. Don't get confused and be like, oh, I spent 22 off my card. It should be subtracted. No, I'm owing this to somebody, right? So I'm going to now owe you an additional 22 bucks. And then I make a payment. I say to you, hey, I know I like, owe you this much money. Um, could you go ahead and take 130 off my debt? And then before that month closes out, I charge another 90 bucks. So I'm now adding an additional $90 to my debt. If you get your calculator and you do 233 plus 54 plus 22 minus 130 plus 90, your new balance. So what was it, February 3rd? Like that was the balance that we owed, right? So I guess it would be like January, February, March, I forgot what month it goes. Like the next month, right? The new balance that you owe, y'all should have gotten $271.91. If you did not, or that does not make sense, y'all let me know. As far as the video is concerned, though, I'm going to turn this off, okay?